atheists have a lot of arguments. Right, you little snots. I have received countless requests to cover this video, and you know me. If anyone asks me to do something, I'm like, nah. That's why I never wash, I don't vote, and all those people in my basement starve to death. But finally, after the again countless people have covered it in their own largely serious ways, it's my turn. And I am going to absolutely f***ing ruin this guy's video. Mostly by not taking it seriously, unless I want to. Because I don't even do what I tell me to do. I will try to make it snappy and see if I can answer them all before the heat death of the universe, because I don't want one of these 40 minute plus monstrosities. Enjoy! But they never really think of anything new that the church hasn't had answers to for the past 2,000 years. Funny that, because theists have a lot of arguments, but they never seem to have anything new that people with brains haven't had answers to for exactly as long. It's almost like a lot of the arguments are really, really bad. So let's answer them. Religion causes wars. Well, actually, only 7% of all human wars were caused by religion, and if you remove Islamic wars, that number drops down to 3%. Way to prove the argument right. Religion causes wars, and your response is, yes, cool. And assuming the numbers are even true, therefore God, right? No, wait. And why wouldn't you count Islam? That's just fucking weird. No one said, your religion causes all wars. Strange response, right off the bat. Bad start. A lot of evil has been done in the name of religion. This is true, but the most murderous people in human history have been atheists. This doesn't mean religion is true, it just means you can't use that as an argument against it. Arguably, there are far more evil things you can do than murder. Sure, death takes away a life, but torture has been done on massive scales by many religious organisations over the years, and you would think that if God was in charge of any of them, he might have told them to, you know, stop. Also, I enjoy the little thing you put in the corner there. That is not what turns up when you search Hitler religion, and the fact that you did put that there proves that you are objectively a lying little shit. So, everything is fair game now. If you were born somewhere else, you wouldn't be a Christian. Okay, and if you were born somewhere else, you wouldn't be an atheist. Everyone's beliefs are shaped by their context. Did you seriously just know you? The point isn't that beliefs are shaped by context. The point is, if your religion is the right one, you wouldn't have been born into it if you were born somewhere else. So I guess we need to add idiot to your list of character flaws. Shit. How do you know which religion is true? Well, everyone, religious or not, has faith in a certain worldview. It's just that some worldviews are called religions and some are secular. But everyone has to ask the question of which worldview best explains the world. That wasn't an answer. Your answer is actually, I don't know, which is a fine answer if someone comes out of nowhere to ask you this. But you chose to show it and explaining how believing things works is not a good response to how do you know you are right? Because you obviously don't. There is no scientific proof that God exists. Well, by definition, science can only prove things inside the natural world, and by definition, God is something outside the natural world. So science can neither prove nor disprove God. So this one is just you agreeing to that point, but also missing that so many fucking theists say that they can absolutely prove God with science. Are you answering for them as well? Because I don't think that they would be super happy with that response. There's no evidence of anything supernatural. Well, that's just not accurate. There are medically documented cases of people with demonic possessions speaking in languages they don't know, for example, and people with near-death experiences getting information they never had access to. I would say that that question is not being presented in its best form. There's no good evidence for the supernatural. That cannot be better explained by natural causes. Because, duh. The Bible has contradictions. Okay, you think you found an apparent contradiction that the church hasn't known about for 2,000 years? Every apparent contradiction can be explained by understanding just a little bit of theology. Just because you have explanations for those contradictions that you are happy with doesn't mean that I, or anyone like me, thinks that they are good enough. And that's mostly because they aren't. The Gospels were anonymous. Okay, anonymous doesn't mean we have no idea who wrote them, it just means the names of the authors aren't signed in the text itself. But we literally have writings from church fathers who knew the apostles and can verify that they indeed wrote the books named after them. I mean, personally, they could have been signed totally by God TM, and that wouldn't change the fact that their contents and the things they are trying to support would be something I could or would hold as true. So even if what you said is true, who gives a shit? 
the Gospels misquote Jesus. Now, it's true that a lot of secular scholars think the Gospels are a mix of real quotes from the historical Jesus and fake quotes added by the Church, but none of them can agree on which quotes are legit and which are not, so we can discard their opinions. I mean, the fact that they all seem to suspect something is amiss demonstrates that there's probably something amiss, which is far more important than whether or not they can agree which part exactly is bollocks. And they, of course, can't all agree which ones are the real. But you, of course, missed that shit like it was a speeding jizz aisle. Although, if I were a betting bastard, the fake ones would be all of them. Jesus never claimed to be God. Yes, he did. He didn't say, I am God, worship me, but he showed that he was God in many places in all four Gospels by doing things that only God can do. It's true that he didn't walk around before his resurrection claiming to be God because he wanted people to figure it out themselves. That's why he kept saying, who do you say that I am? However, after his resurrection, people figured out that he was God and Jesus congratulated them. You just agreed to the point again. Like, your response is mostly whatever, but it really should have started. Jesus didn't claim to be God. No, he didn't. But here's these other things I think show that he was. Whether or not any of that is accurate. This is just more of a problem with your poor grasp of language. Put it on the list. The later one of the Gospels was written, the more divine it makes Jesus seem, so we can extrapolate that Jesus was originally a human figure who got made more divine over time. Alright, maybe some Gospels emphasize Jesus' divinity more than others, but what about Paul's letters that fully confess the divinity of Jesus and were also written before any of the Gospels? So that breaks your pattern. I mean, if the letters are letters and the Gospels are Gospels, then the pattern is still very much there. And I assume that they are different things because they are, you know, different. So a direct comparison doesn't seem to make that much sense, regardless of the timeline. The Bible supports slavery. No, it doesn't. Just because there's slavery in the Bible doesn't mean the Bible supports it. There are some Old Testament verses that could be interpreted as condoning slavery, but Jesus himself said that the Old Testament made accommodations to people's sinful state. And also, slave owners in the American South had slave Bibles for their slaves to read, but it omitted a lot of the real Bible, so if the Bible actually did support slavery, this wouldn't have been necessary. That's just wrong. First off, the Bible absolutely and consistently explains the rules and the hows of acquiring and keeping slaves. If I wrote a book called How to Rob Banks and then claimed I wasn't supporting grand larceny because grand larceny is bad, you would think I was an idiot. Also, I can only assume that slave bibles mostly contain shit about submitting to masters, and I can't imagine that having shit about slavery in there would have been much of a problem since it's so obviously a f***ing condone slavery, you goof. Christianity supported slavery. Well, sure, some Christians did, but all human civilizations have had slavery. Christian civilization was the first one to abolish it on moral grounds. The fact that you're against slavery is due to Christian influence. Also, most organizations fighting modern-day slavery are Christian. Let's say that's 100% true and not missing out on, you know, thousands of years of human progress that got people to the position where they started to think, hold on, owning people is a bit fucked. It's weird that the thing God definitely wanted all along took you so freaking long to get to when it was always his opinion. And he's an all power boy who could literally have turned slavery off at any point he wanted, but didn't. G good job. God killed tons of people in the Bible. Well, it's actually way more than that. God numbers everyone's days. He's the giver of life so he can take it, especially if people sin. This is starting to feel like fucking improv, because I'm pretty sure you just yes-anded me. For fuck's sake. If I point out God killing people is bad, and your only response is, well, he kills everyone when you think about it, that's only worse for your case, not better. Atheist countries are more prosperous. Yes, it's true that Northern European countries are very prosperous and very secular, but correlation doesn't equal causation. It's not like atheism causes prosperity, it's that prosperity causes atheism because when people have comfortable lives, they don't feel a need to depend on God. But why are these particular countries so prosperous in the first place? They may be secular now, but they're rooted in generations and generations of Protestant Christianity. If you want an example of a country that's atheist and not rooted in Christianity, look at Communist China. Hey, correlation doesn't equal causation, except when I say it does. Okay, I don't think there's much more I need to say when you are so hypocritical with your application of fallacies on the list. There's 4,000 gods that people believe in and you're atheist to 3,999 of them. I just go one god further. 
Okay, this isn't the gotcha that you think it is, because the question of whether some sort of god exists is fundamentally different from the question of which religion is right about god. No, you dumb asshole, we know that. We are just pointing out that if you think you are right about which god, you have 4,000 other ideas of him to contend with. But if you think you're right about no god, well, I don't have to contend with shit. If god created everything, then who created god? Well, God is defined as the uncaused causer. Everyone knows there needs to be a first cause at the beginning of the chain of all events in the universe, and it makes a lot more sense for that first cause to be a personal God who caused things for a reason, rather than some random, impersonal force. Everyone? What are you talking about? And that it makes sense for it to be some asshole who really specifically is into you is actually the opposite of the more likely when it comes to something that just kinda does a universe. I mean, that would explain everything so much better than someone who actually gives a shit. Science disproves God. Well, actually, the church invented modern science. All the founders of the scientific revolution deeply believed in God, and medieval theologians laid the groundwork for modern science by saying the world was governed by an intelligent creator. That means we can understand the world with our intelligence. And studying God led to studying the world because the world is God's creation. And yet today, atheism is overrepresented in science. It's almost like in the stupid ages where even science boys were dumb and thought that God did a real, because fucking everybody did, that it kind of didn't matter what you did. But once we got away from that, it all seemed to change. God is just used to fill in the gaps of things that science can't explain yet. Well, actually, God is the reason for everything, even things that science can explain. It's not one or the other. It's not like everything's explained by either science or God, and the more science can explain, the less God can explain. Really, science can explain almost everything, but God is still behind it all, because science explains the how, and God explains the why. You really missed the forest for the trees with that one, didn't you? For starters, your why hypothesis is barely an answer. That's just what you think, and you are stating it as a fact. And second, so many things were explained for the longest time as Godmuster did it, and then slowly but surely, that has been demonstrated to be a faulty hypothesis. As our explanations grow, God becomes less and less necessary. That is the point. Even with your nonsense here, he has become less necessary. If God is good, why can't he destroy all evil? Well, he eventually will. Eventually, it's just not good enough, because why the fuck did he let it in the first place? Why can't he do it now? Because he'd have to destroy you. He could fucking try. Why does God let any bad things happen? Because we deserve it. You hear that, newborn babies who don't even have the faculties to even comprehend what is happening to them, let alone make any choices in the matter? You fucking deserve any and all bad things. Dude, you sound psychotic. And here's an argument. Religion makes people say horrendously evil shit without even trying. I'm jealous. I try so hard to be evil, and you got it over me in spades. Well, animals don't sin, so why do they suffer? Well, the Bible says all things will be restored, so if God is good, we can assume that they will be compensated. Well, that's simply not good enough, seeing as no amount of compensation for any amount of suffering ever fixes the fact that you suffered. I mean, if you destroyed my arm, there is no amount of money that will ever bring my arm back. That happened. It will always have happened. And even if you replace it with a sick Gatling gun, I would still prefer my actual arm. Although if it shot whiskey bullets... How do you know that God isn't evil instead? Well, because evil is not a thing the way good is. Just like cold is just a lack of heat, and dark is just a lack of light, evil is just a lack of good. And for good to be objective, it needs to come from God. So a God who is objectively evil is logically impossible. Just like how an apologist who makes good points is impossible, as demonstrated by this video. I see. Also, this absence of good shit makes no sense. I mean, this box is empty, and this box is full of dead humans. Which one is more evil? Evil. The empty one, obviously. You gotta fill them all, man. Can God make a rock he can't lift? Well, you're just asking if God can contradict himself, like can God lie, or can God change, or can God make another God? And the answer to all those things is no. 
God being all-powerful means he can do anything to things outside himself. It doesn't mean that he can do anything to himself or that he can contradict himself. All-powerful. Do you know what that word all means? It doesn't mean most of. It doesn't mean everything but. It means all. All the powers is to have all the powers, whether that be to himself or not. If he can't do shit to himself, he's not all-powerful. But that is mostly because all-power is a faulty premise that makes no sense if you analyse it for even a moment. Why did God let evil exist at all? So he could be glorified in defeating it. Triumph over evil is a greater good than evil having just never existed. That is utter bullshit. If I allow someone to punch some children so I can go and attack them or have them arrested or whatever thing I find to be the quote unquote solution to that situation, A, the kids will still have been harmed and like I said, that shit just doesn't go away. And B, the fact that I could possibly have stopped it and didn't makes me a fucking asshole. Although your proposition is actually even worse, because God effectively had to make it so that evil could even exist. It would be more like I paid some people to punch the bunch of kids so that I could then show up and prove what a great guy I am. That is just so much fucking worse, it's not even funny. You know, aside from all the kids getting punched. <laughs> Religion is just wishful thinking. Well, if that were true, then the Bible wouldn't be all about how much we all suck. It can be both, especially if you want to neg someone into doing whatever it is you want. You call them names, you make them feel like shit, and then you say, don't worry, infinite forever mansions or some wild shit that will never happen. Frankly, the real problem is the Bible is kind of abusive, mostly to those who believe it. Psychology explains why you believe in God. So what? If God is real, we should expect there to be some psychological or social benefit to believing in him. Okay, but the opposite is also true. If there is no God, the only explanation to people like you being so fucking sure is that your brain is stupid and we can explain why it's stupid like that. Spiritual experiences can be explained by brain chemicals. Well, romantic experiences can also be explained by brain chemicals, but that doesn't mean your wife isn't real. So spiritual experiences being explained by brain chemicals doesn't mean that God isn't real. And that dragon that fucked your dad in that dream you had can be explained by the same chemical processes. It doesn't mean that the great Ugmuthrth, the dad fucker, is real. It just means that experiences based on brain chemistry are not to be trusted to give us reliable data. That's why we use science instead of, well, the other day I felt weird, so it must be ghosts. Well, drug trips show that spiritual experiences are from the brain. Well, people who have had both drug trips and near-death experiences say that they're completely different categories of feeling. Oh, some people have said that, have they? Sounds like a real in-depth scientific experiment you are referencing here. Also, some guys I know said they met God and he told them that he didn't exist, so checkmate, fuckwit. The story of Jesus was copied from the story of Horus or some other ancient character. Okay, dude, that's a Reddit atheist level myth. Even atheist scholars know that that's silly. I mean, even if it's completely 100% original do not steal, uh, that doesn't mean that it's true. Faith is the opposite of logic and reason. No, it's not. Faith just means trust. Anytime you eat food, you're having faith that it's not poisoned, even if you can't scientifically prove it. If you're married, you have faith that your wife loves you, even if you can't scientifically prove that. And if you tried to scientifically prove it, she'd probably get very mad at you because it would mean you didn't trust her. Um, you can definitely scientifically prove if your food has been poisoned. What the fuck are you talking about? And there's more to love in a relationship than just faith. You know your spouse loves you through actions. If they said they loved you and then constantly cheated on you, treated you like shit, you know, poisoned your food, you would pretty much know, regardless of faith, that they probably weren't that into you. Evolution proves God didn't create the world. Well, not necessarily. God often works through natural processes in the Bible. And for all of church history, there have been prominent Christian theologians who have had a more metaphorical interpretation of Genesis, even well over a thousand years before Darwin existed. You do not know what evolution is if you think that it has anything to do with the origins of the fucking planet. Scientific illiteracy on the list, what a surprise. Christianity only spread because of military conquest. Well, eventually they did do military conquest, but for the first 300 years of Christianity, it was illegal, and it took over the Roman Empire despite that because of how popular it became. 
Let's say that is true. Argument ad populi does not mean something is true or good or whatever. I mean, Sersic is kind of popular and his videos are all objectively shit. Wait. Constantine invented what we now know of as Christianity. Again, Reddit atheist level myth. Atheists can do better than that. Listen to an actual scholar. I'm glad that you admit that atheists can do better. I just wish I had the same faith for theists. If Christianity is true, why are there so many denominations of it? Well, yeah, there are a lot of denominations, but the things they agree on are a lot more significant than the things they disagree on. It doesn't matter if the things they agree or disagree on are significant to each other. It matters if God thinks they are significant, because if he really cares about shellfish, but actually never really minded if anyone prayed to him or not, a lot of y'all are super fucked. There's no evidence for Jesus outside the Bible. Well, that's not true. There's the ancient Jewish historian Josephus who wrote about Jesus, and he's one of the reasons why even secular scholars know Jesus historically existed. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure a Jewish fella probably didn't think that he was the actual son of God, because that's kind of an important thing to them. So even if it's accurate that people talked about someone called Jesus outside of the Bible, at least in this case, they probably didn't mean Jesus Jesus. You really think God made billions of galaxies with billions of stars in each of them just to have a personal relationship with you? Yes. Well, good for you. That doesn't make any sense and makes you sound like an egotistical maniac. But no, that's it. Stop being so ridiculous, please. Also, I enjoy the implication from this picture in that you having done a piss poor job of answering atheists I mean, many of these weren't even arguments, they were just points to make you think, that we would suddenly turn to Jesus. And I will. Hey mate, why did you make this guy so fucking dumb? Oh right, of course, because of the funny. Fair play. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, Check out Mrs. Six's channel, Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-